Hello again everyone, and today I'll be taking a look at a classic zoom lens for Nikon's APS-C digital SLR cameras, the AFS DX Nikkor 16-85mm f3.5-5.6 G E D V R. It can also be adapted onto Nikon's new mirrorless Z mount cameras if you have the FTZ adapter, although you won't be able to shoot in full frame mode if you do, only DX mode. This lens came out all the way back in 2008, and it was marketed as a premium quality and correspondingly more expensive upgrade to Nikon's little kit lenses. Its body is packed with 17 different glass elements, so it has a complex optical formula which will hopefully translate into high quality images. The lens still officially costs £600 in the UK or US$700, dollars, but because they've been out for such a long time now, you can find them far cheaper over on eBay if you're so inclined. I managed to haggle this one down to only £140 and it's in mint condition. Its maximum aperture of f3.5 to 5.6 is nothing at all to write home about. This lens doesn't really give you much faster shutter speeds or more out of focus backgrounds than a standard kit lens, but what it does offer is much better build quality and a much more substantial zoom range. Here it is, up against a Nikon 18-55mm zoomable kit lens. As you can see, the 16-85 starts at a notably wider angle, the full frame equivalent of 24mm, and zooms in much further to 85mm, meaning you get a really comprehensive standard zoom range here. I love that it can zoom out as wide as 16mm, it doesn't sound like much of a difference but it is, and that makes it an ideal one lens solution for taking on holiday, in my opinion. The lens features image stabilisation to help keep your still shots sharper and your video footage smoother. Here's some footage with it turned off and now turned on. I'm quite impressed with how steady it holds your footage there, uh, that's really good, especially considering the age of this lens. Well, let's look at its build quality. It's a little bigger and heavier than an 18-55mm to kit lens, uh, as you would expect, weighing in at about 500 grams, but it's still fairly compact. It's based on a metal lens mount with a hefty weather sealing gasket around the edge. Next comes a plastic focus ring, which turns reasonably smoothly and can be safely turned at any time you like. We are also treated to a focus distance scale here. As you change focus, the lens displays a lot of focus breathing, zooming out as you focus more closely. The lens's autofocus motor works quite accurately, but only averagely quickly, and making a quiet whirring sound. It won't bother you in normal shooting, but your microphone will pick that up when shooting video. At the end of the lens we get a rubberized zoom ring. It turns fairly smoothly, but stiffens up a bit when you zoom past 50mm or so. The good news about that, though, is that the lens doesn't suffer from any kind of zoom creeping when you tilt it up or down, unlike the Nikkor 18-105mm lens. The lens's filter thread is 67mm in diameter, and it comes with a free lens hood. Overall, the build quality and functionality of the lens is actually quite nice. It's a nice little step upwards from your basic kit lens. More importantly though, let's look at image quality. When this lens first came out 12 years ago, it had a good reputation for sharpness, but let's test it on a newer 24 megapixel APS-C camera, a Nikon D5600. In the middle of the image, straight from f3.5, we see brilliant sharpness and contrast. The image corners, however, are very soft. Stop down to f5.6 for a good improvement in those corners though, and f8 looks great. The lens stays this sharp at f11, but if you stop down as far as f16, the image begins to soften again due to the effects of diffraction. So at the widest angles, the lens is always sharp in the middle, and if you stop down to f8, then you can get excellent sharpness across the image frame. Well, let's zoom in a little now to 40mm, where the maximum aperture has darkened to f4.8. In the middle of the image, I'm glad to report that sharpness and contrast continue to be excellent. The corners look very good now, too, and stop down to f5.6 or f8 for some tiny improvements, very nice. 
Finally, let's zoom all the way in to 85mm. The maximum aperture is now f5.6. The middle of the image still looks quite sharp and punchy, although just a tiny bit less so than at wider angles. The corner image quality here is fairly sharp, too. Stop down to f8 to see excellent sharpness in the corners and a tiny little boost in the middle of your images, too. Stop down to f11 or darker, though, and diffraction starts to soften your image again. Overall, well, considering the lens's pretty comprehensive zoom range, it's a fairly fantastic performance actually, I think. Even on a newer 24 megapixel camera, the lens's images carry plenty of detail and weighty contrast to really make your images stand out. To me, it looks a bit sharper than Canon's old 15 to 85 mm equivalent EFS lens that I tested oh, years ago now. This Nikon lens is really good. Well, let's see about the lens's distortion and vignetting. I've turned in-camera corrections off for this test. At 16mm, we see some moderate barrel distortion with a moustache pattern to it, but actually I was expecting a bit worse than this, and the vignetting doesn't seem to be too bad either. Stop down to f5.6 and the corners seem to brighten up nicely. Zoom in to 20mm and that distortion straightens out. Zoom all the way in to 85mm for some mild pincushion distortion and gentle vignetting, but nothing to seriously worry about here. Honestly, this is a pretty impressive performance for vignetting and distortion, I was expecting a worse result than this. This lens can focus as closely as 38cm to your subject, pretty close really, which is handy. What else is handy is that the image quality remains very sharp at close distances at f5.6, and at f8, the close-up image quality is even sharper. Another great result there. Now, let's see how well the lens works against bright lights. We stumble across a slightly weak point here. We see quite a few flaring artifacts and a loss of contrast too, especially when you zoom in. Finally, bokeh. This lens's maximum aperture of only f5.6 at the telephoto end means that it's not easy to get out of focus backgrounds in your images. You have to zoom in and get close to your subject for that. When you do get them, they look reasonably smooth, but with a somewhat heavy rendering. Overall, I actually loved this lens and was really impressed by it. It's impressively sharp for a 12 year old optic, its contrast is good, its vignetting and distortion are low, its zoom range is super useful, it works very well for close up images, its build quality is good, the list goes on. I'm not really sure if I'd pay £600 for it today, but it is rather a brilliant standard zoom lens nonetheless, and well worth looking out for. Some people might want a longer zoom range than 16 to 85mm, but you just won't get the same high quality images with a super zoom lens if you decide to go down that avenue. I'm so pleased with it that today it's going to be highly recommended.